Time for a little preliminary winter forecast look. I'm meteorologist and president Brian Ivey from NeoWeather, and we are going to delve into why some of you might be seeing a decent amount of this white stuff this winter, and while maybe others might be having a suffering ski season or some other indicators with actual impacts. Now, what about our SST anomalies or sea surface temperatures compared to above average or below average? If you have above average temperatures in the Eastern Equatorial Pacific, that's an El Nino and vice versa is a La Nina. This is the projection as we go through portions of this winter. Not seeing anything in the way of bluish colors or anything in the way of yellows, reds, or oranges, which means pretty much average SST anomalies across the eastern equatorial Pacific. So that means a neutral ENSO cycle and no real El Nino or La Nina likely. So what does that mean? Well, typically the cold air sets up with the polar jet stream coming down across the portions of the plains, Great Lakes, and uh, probably the northeast as well. Then a wintry battle zone with the main low pressure track across portions of the Tennessee and Ohio valleys, and then it stays warm, generally speaking, across the southern portion of the country. This is where our jet stream setup would be, and that's where the moisture is generally conveyed. Up here across the Gulf of Alaska is normally ridging and well above average temperature, so that kind of pumps up warmth across this section of the country here in the west. We'll see if that exactly happens, but these anomalies certainly speak for themselves. Looking at a lot of other years with these ENSO conditions in neutral, you could definitely see a lot of cold due to the blue coloring there indicated on that. And precipitation areas also pretty consistent with that previous map that I showed you. So that's just one big factor is our La Nina or El Nino, the Southern Oscillation there. But we have the NAO, we have the AO, the PNA, the EPO to all consider, plus other indicators as well. And some of these we just do not know until we get maybe a couple, few weeks, several weeks out. So it's still September, several, several, several weeks before we begin winter. And it's just around the corner, it seems, in some respects, but in other areas, you just can't get super detailed. Some of these climate models are having a little trouble. How about maybe some above average temperatures and spots, but nothing really below on one? Our wonderful American long range model. The, I'll tell you, this is always a warm one. Doesn't matter what season it is, it has plenty of warm temperatures across a good portion of the country. And the Canadian. Hey, there we go. Maybe a little bit more consistent with some thoughts of what our teleconnections are showing us across portions of the east. And then there's that big upper level ridging and some warmth across portions of the northwest. So maybe that has a little bit more credence. Now, if you take a lot of previous years that have had some of these similar conditions and you throw them all together and mix them up, these are kind of the projections with that. And that's a lot of cold air across the eastern half of the country and definitely plenty warm back towards the west. So that's just, again, one of many different tools that we look at when projecting a long range forecast. So without further ado, here is our preliminary look at the winter forecast. Generally, middle of the road type temperatures across Texas. This could kind of go either way across portions of the Western Plains into the Rockies, but then we're pretty sure it's gonna be very warm across the West. West Coast up into Seattle area, where the cold's gonna be is gonna be generally upper Midwest, Eastern Plains, Great Lakes, maybe into the Ohio Valley, maybe into the East, especially I think across portions of upstate New York, maybe into New England, and then a Southeast Ridge looks to develop so warmer normal conditions somewhere in the Southeast. So that's just kind of our initial good guess of thinking on what to expect and kind of going with our run of the mill anomalies and teleconnections what we're seeing is going to be the active portion across the areas of the Tennessee, Ohio Valley, and then up into maybe New England as well. Could be an active storm track in portions of the I-95 up into the Northeast. We'll have plenty more updates on winter forecast potential and what we're looking at as we go throughout the last few months of fall. Have a great day and remember if you're a snow contractor, we can help you out with detailed weather forecasts specific to your operation and your location, adding a lot of peace of mind to your operation.